Probably my favorite criticism of Christianity, and especially of Catholicism, coming from the secular left, is the rigidity in thinking and lack of free thought that the faith supposedly has built into it. We're all totalitarian thinkers who would vote away our alleged rights to freedom of expression and freedom of thought, or so our critics say. In fact, not only would we restrict the rights of others to speak freely about certain things, like blasphemy or pornography, but we'd reinstitute the Inquisition and punish people for thought crime. I mean, the church had an index of banned books. That's how the enemies of the church think, at least a certain kind of enemy. The problem with this thinking is that we're usually the ones who are always defending our rights to speak. Christianity is diametrically opposed to the values of the world, regardless of the ideology of some faction of the world. Catholicism doesn't neatly line up with the secular conservatism, progressivism, or libertarianism, and in fact is starkly opposed to socialism, fa feminism, and other secular false gospels. So it should be of no surprise to anyone that we earn the ire of secularists of all stripes. If the secular progressive left wasn't such a threat to the moral order right now, more lay Catholics would be decrying the economic injustices perpetrated by the various secular forms of American conservatism. I say such political things right now because of two stories that are strikingly similar. Both involve Catholics in positions of elite power in intellectual institutions, and both have been silenced by secularists for thought crime. I'm not talking about the Kavanaugh confirmation hearings, though one story does touch on that circus. Instead, what we're talking about here is the violation of a most basic American value, one that is required for an increasingly polarized system to work. That value is, ironically, tolerance of opposing ideas. We are told constantly that we need to be tolerant of others, and that as Christians we fail to be tolerant. That Jesus was tolerant, which is a weird claim in and of itself. We are told by the most intolerant people in our country that we must be tolerant. And it is this intolerance that has led to the silencing of two Catholic figures in positions of power. The first story comes from NPR, though it has been reported by fake news CNN and other mainstream media outlets. Headline, a dean at a Catholic university suspended for tweeting about Kavanaugh accuser. A dean at the Catholic University of America in Washington, D.C. has been suspended for a tweet that, according to university officials, demonstrated a lack of sensitivity to sexual assault survivors. William Rainford, dean of the university's National Catholic School of Social Service, posted the tweet on, on his official university account last week, one day before Christine Blasey Ford and Brett Kavanaugh made back-to-back -back appearances before the Senate Judiciary Committee. Rainford references Julie Swetnick, the third woman to come forward with sexual misconduct allegations against the Supreme Court nominee. Swetnick has alleged that she witnessed sexual assault by Kavanaugh during a party and was herself the victim of assault in an incident where Kavanaugh was present. Kavanaugh has denied the allegation. In his position as dean, Rainford oversees the university's undergraduate, graduate, and PhD programs in social work. As an aside, in the ongoing Kavanaugh confirmation saga, Swetnick's story has been repudiated by a lot of people, including apparently her own family. That's why you haven't seen any Democratic lawmakers really grabbing under account of things. And also that article did very much tone down the nature of the assaults, which she claimed was a sort of institutionalized rape gang scenario. But let's continue. Quoting Rainford, Swetnick is a 55 years old. Kavanaugh is 52 years old. Since when do senior girls hang with freshman boys? If it had happened when Kavanaugh was a senior, Swetnick was an adult drinking with and by her admission, having sex with underage boys. In another universe, he would be the victim and she would be the perpetrator. <laughs> Woo lad, I don't know if Rainsford is aware of the state of higher education in the U.S., but virtually all schools, including Catholic ones, have bowed to the altar of feminism. Saying things like that, even if true, is not allowed, as he soon found out. More than 40 graduate social work students walked out of their classes to protest Rainford's tweet the following afternoon, according to The Tower, Catholic University's independent student newspaper. That's code for a left-wing rag. The students created a petition of demands, including Rainford's resignation, an apology from University President John Garvey, and a university donation to the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network. I was very upset that, one, the dean would say something like that, but also that he would be so nonchalant about students here who are victims of child molestation and sexual assault. Bianca Andrews, another social work graduate student, told the paper. This is at a Catholic school. The secular outrage mob exists in virtually all universities, and they are especially primed for punishing thought criminals. And this is why I am so afraid for the future of the United States. These are the future leaders of the country. And these students are presumably the future intellectual leaders of the church in America. 
The very best theologians I've met in life went to CUA and are faithful Catholics. One wonders what happened. The story finishes with the announcement that Rainsford was suspended for the rest of the semester for his comments. For the record, Catholic University of America is a signatory to the infamous Lando Lake Statement, which basically declared that Catholic universities don't need to submit to the authority of the church in order to remain Catholic. That certainly is reflected in this case, as a truly Catholic institution would not have bowed to the secular feminist agenda with such vigor as they displayed here. And at some point in the future, I'm going to do a video on the Land of Lake Statement. The second story comes from Oklahoma, specifically the University of Oklahoma. Again, it involves a dean who is Catholic and is being punished for violating the norms set out by our overlords in the matriarchy. Headline, University of Oklahoma College of Law Associate Dean Resigns. OU College of Law Associate Dean for Academic Affairs and Associate Director of the Law Center, Brian McCall, voluntarily resigned today after controversy over his views on women written in his 2014 book. That was four years ago. OU's Equal Opportunity Office <laughs> conducted an independent review of McCall and found no evidence of workplace harassment or discrimination, but McCall decided to resign because of the backlash from his statements in his book to build the city of God living as Catholics in a secular age. Here's a quote from his book that's in the article. Women must veil to their form to obscure its contours out of charity towards men, McCall wrote in the chapter Modest Contact with the World, Women in Pants and Similar Frauds. To know that women in pants have this effect on men and to wear them is thus a sin against charity as well as modesty. Dean Joseph Harris Jr. sent out a statement to the OU law community. It said in part, the OU College of Law is a place of inclusion. Beyond ensuring that the college is free from illegal harassment or discrimination, the college must prepare tomorrow's leaders, our students, for the world in which they will serve. It would be a disservice to them if we did not provide an educational experience that pre presents diverse subject matter, encourages thoughtful conversation and debate, and prepares them to practice in an increasingly diverse world. Wow. Dean McCall's crime is the repeating of what had been the church's social norms for centuries. In traditional Catholic circles, nothing he said would be controversial. I recall hearing an interview with Dean McCall on a YouTube channel somewhere or another some time ago, and was at the time surprised that he was able to get away with committing such heinous crimes as advocating for traditional gender norms while working for a public university. It seems that even in relatively sane Oklahoma, you are not permitted to be authentically Catholic. And if you're a Catholic who is perplexed at the idea of women veiling, that practice is the norm still in virtually every traditional parish in the United States and is a social norm in many Catholic countries. We're not talking about veiling the way you see women forced to in countries run by the Mohammedans, but more akin to what you see in Eastern European countries. Needless to say, for expressing an idea that violates the norms of the emerging matriarchy we now live in, Dean McCall was forced to resign. And some people wonder why I despair of my chances of ever working in real academia again. If you like videos like this, like and share this video and subscribe. I can be found on Twitter and Facebook with links in the description. For Return to Tradition, I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.